Okay, so again, we're going over the 27 questions together. On the first one, it says, and in an orchestra performance, there are 240 adult tickets sold and 310 youth tickets sold. If the cost is five more, if the cost of an adult ticket is five more than a youth ticket, and the opera company yields a certain revenue, what is the cost of the youth ticket? Now, all three of these problems you're going to see today are all the same. All I did was change up the numbers to see the differences in the three versions. So we'll go through one of these versions together so you can see it. Now, if you have a different version of this, don't worry about it. Okay? Just change your numbers so we can all do it together. So use the numbers that you're going to see right here. Okay? 240 adult. Use 310 youth. The cost of an adult ticket is five more than the cost of a youth ticket. And the company makes 25950 What is the cost, the cost of a youth ticket? Well, okay? Are you no, no. That's what I said. That's so we're going to go over this one together. Tomorrow you're going to have your actual assessment on 27. Okay? So for this problem, my let statements, again, is the, always the first start. And it's always the first point to start with. So, again, I start with... I start with... This is absurd. Let's try this one more time. Come on. Okay. A lot easier now. Sorry, Word does not work as well with that program as PDF does, so it's one of those weird oh. things. Not that PDF excuse works any better. <laughs> You're excused. <laughs> All right, so looking at this problem now, again, we have 240 adult tickets, 310 youth tickets. It's f adult ticket is five more than a youth ticket, and we know that this is the total amount of money they made. So with this kind of a problem, with this kind of a problem, we have to start with our let statements. And now, what question have I been asking you guys recently? What do the let statements actually answer? Hey, the let statements answer the value of the, um, what you're looking for. Like exactly. Yeah. You're exactly right, Lauren. So can you explain to me what you would let x and y equal here? Uh, x, let x equal the adult tickets and y equal the youth The what about those tickets, though? What are so, we looking for? So, so they call, oh, the Here, cost. That's the key point. See, and I'm, I'm actually glad you made that mistake. I know that sounds terrible, but I am. Because it taught all of us a lesson here. The question is the cost of a youth ticket, not the amount sold. Because that actually tells us the amount sold, right? Doesn't it earlier? Yeah. Remember, you have to answer the question being asked. The question asks for the cost of a youth ticket. But I can't just find the cost of a youth ticket by itself. If I need the cost of a youth ticket, I also need the adult ticket in there as well. So, sorry, I have X and I have a Y. So we start with let X equal the cost of an adult ticket. Adult ticket cost. And Y is youth <laughs> ticket cost. What do those quotes mean again? <coughs> What do quotes mean underneath the words? Same thing as above. <laughs> so I'm repeating the same words. I don't feel like writing them. That's how you do that shorthand. Do you guys understand that? You should do this kind of stuff in your notes. You should not be writing every single word out. You need to develop your own shorthand. So again, ticket cost repeats itself. Now. That's all that means. Now, based on this problem, I've got some information that I want to use. Can anybody tell me one piece of information I can use just by reading through the problem? I'll tell you what I got. Give me, give me one of the equations. For okay. Five plus y okay. equals x. Okay. So Olin is currently taking a look at this statement. So let's do that together. And he's able to see it right away. It says an adult ticket, adult ticket. What is adult ticket represented by? What variable? X. X. So an adult ticket is, what does is mean? Equals. Equals. Again, I'm breaking it down here. This is x, is means equals, five more than, plus y, five plus, five plus, five more than, this is obviously the number five, more than means plus a youth ticket. A youth ticket is represented by which variable? Y. Why? Again, I don't want just all guys. Please, others, you got to focus, guys. Some of you are looking down, staring at your pen, biting your nails, focus. 
So here, that's my first equation based on what I boxed in in green. And I can read it back to myself. Try it. X, well, that's adult ticket cost. So this tells me adult ticket cost is 5 more than, more than a youth ticket cost. It makes sense. It's logical. If you read the equation back and don't use variables, but you use words instead, you should get back what was in that green box there. That was the first equation. Now, we also know that there are 240 youth tickets sold and 310 youth tickets sold. And we also know that the cost is 25950 Alright, I might got another equation. What do you got? Alright, so 25 comma 950 equals X plus what? Ish. Plus. Ish. Uh, equals X. What, what does X represent? It's, uh, oh, equals X. Plus, just answer the question. What does X represent? I don't take. I said that. For how many tickets though? Forty. No, the X represents the adult ticket cost for one ticket. Remember, if you solve for X, you're gonna get like five dollars, so and you'll get like seven dollars or something. So, all right. So. This is for one ticket. How many tickets do I want though? Two hundred forty. Two hundred forty adult tickets. So, so what can I do? Two hundred forty X. Okay. Do you see what we're doing here, people? Again, X represents one ticket. So this is 240x, go ahead. Plus 310. There you go. There are 310 Why? youth tickets. Okay? okay? Now, I'm going to show you something today. And from last class, if you remember, I would probably use substitution here. Because, take a look, isn't x solved for already? Yeah. So you can take this quantity and substitute it in for x. Remember that substitution method. So take the quantity that is circled and substitute it in for x. Okay? Question. Yes. Um, like, if it's a variable, if your variable, um, like for x and y, you have to put the number there? The number is so important because x represents one ticket only. Could one adult ticket and one child ticket add up to $25,000? It's not possible, right? Like I mean, what kind of tickets are we talking about here? You're crazy. <laughs> so we have 240 adult tickets, and we have 310 youth tickets. Together, that's how much money they make. That's like the basketball problem you did with Romer. That's where the two points comes in, so it's 2x plus 3y equals the total amount of points. I thought that, but it's just the same question. Look at your units. That's what you got to think about. This is x is the cost of, the do cost of a ticket. This is the cost of a ticket. Do cost of two tickets make sense to add up? Again, look at your units. The ticket cost is what helps you. Okay? All right. Again, the next two problems are the same, but just different numbers. Okay? Same process. You would plug that in there, and then you would have to solve. This would be a long process to solve. I'm going to show you a way today on the calculator that is a little bit easier to solve these. Okay? It's a little bit easier to. If you don't have yours, you've got to look on for now. Okay? Well, you need to have them when you're taking your text, guys. So for this problem, let's continue now. Let's go on to concept 28 from that. Okay, and I'm going to show you a pretty cool example thing that I think you'll like today. Uh, there was a very fun act application of this topic that I looked at about two years ago. And uh, I have it all printed out for you. I want to show you guys what it is. Before we get to that, though, we want to start with some problems. I know it says example five. I'm going in, create in a different order than I did in the notes. So if you look at the notes on that line, this is example five. I'm starting with that first. For 28? Did you put that little R or did that just pop up by itself? That? Mm -hmm. I put that. <laughs> Um, <laughs> did I not? I'll make sure I had it right up to this period. I thought they were up right now. I put them up for the other class. I might not have. When you put things on headline, you can like copy to all of your classes. So I know I put them up for seven periods. It's possible I didn't drag all the third period to copy. So I'll do it. Thank you. I appreciate that. We're third period. So this kind of a problem. This is a standard scenario where you're going to have three equations and three variables. Can I get a reader to read the whole thing for me? The whole thing. Somebody that doesn't usually volunteer as much. I don't like volunteering. Do you answer a lot? I appreciate that. Can somebody just read the whole thing? Nice and loud one. Uh, Michael, James, and Joey go to Checkers for some burgers, fries, and shakes. On their first visit, 
It purchased five burgers, three orders of fries, and three shakes for a total of $35. A week later, on their second visit, they ordered four burgers. What did that say? Three or? Uh, five orders of fries, sorry. Five orders of fries and four shakes for $39. A few days later, they, got, they get lunch from Checkers again. They order six burgers, four orders of fries, and three shakes, and it costs forty-two dollars. What does each item? Cost? Okay, now watch what I did. Here's what I did on purpose. I used different colors for each scenario, and then I box in the black the questions being asked. So, do they have yeah. like diabetes or something? The question being asked is, what does each item cost? So I want you to tell me what my variable are going to be for each one. I know I have three of them because there's three items. Letter to work on our show. So I'm going to say me, I'm going to have X, I'm going to have Y, and I'm going to have Z, okay? What should X be? The burger what? What's being X? Good. The cost of the burger. Oh, I'm focused, please. X is the cost of the burger. X is the cost of the burger. Okay. Now, Jose, what would Y be in this case? The shakes. The cost of? Okay, now I would probably do fries next and then oh. shakes just because the order was written in. But it doesn't matter. Let's say fries for now, okay? So cost of, now when I say fries, what do I mean by fries? What do you get? You get one? One fry. Cost of fries. One order of fries, yes, a box of fries. You don't get one fry. This is not the cost for every one single French fry. It's the cost for an order of French fries. <laughs> I know. Because last class, other kids, I would, for one fry, it costs that much? <laughs> one order of fries. And then the last one, everybody, would be what? Shakes. Shakes. Okay? Cost of shakes. Now, based on that information, based on that information and what's underlined in my three colors, I want to write out three different equations. <coughs> Why do I need three equations this time, not two? Yeah, there are three variables. Very good. Remember, if you have three variables, you need three equations. If you have two variables, two equations. One variable, one equation. Whenever you have a linear system, it's always the same variables as equations to solve. Marcus. You want an equation? Give me one, Marcus. Alright, so 5x plus 3y plus 2y plus 3z. Thirty-five. Okay, Marcus. Now explain. You're absolutely right. All right. So five burgers. Your X is the cost of your burger. Oh, how many burgers? One burger. And you have how many? Five. X burgers. Three <laughs> orders of fries. The cost of one order of fries. Why? So you have three fries. The cost. Three shakes. We have three shakes. Z is one cost of one shake. We have three costs of three shakes. How much money all together? Thirty-five dollars. Is that simple enough? Thirty-five. Okay. Yeah. Again, a burger is cost X. We have five of them, so we have five X. Fries cost Y. We have three of the fries, so we have three Y. Shakes cost Z. We have three shakes, so we have three Z. Uh, In total, we spend. Thirty-five bucks. Uh, wait, 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 wait. I know, I know. Why is the answer? You know the answer to all of them, right? Yeah, truly, I mean, why is Z would be five and X would be one? Thank you, bro. Y and Z would be five and X would be one. That's Incorrect. Incorrect. It might work for this equation only, but we have three equations, don't we? Oh yeah. That's so we have to get the next two, and you got to check those. Now, think logically. Would I make a problem where a shake and fries cost five dollars each, and a burger costs a dollar? Is that logical? Is that logical? No. No, right? You're not going to pay five dollars for an order of fries. Depends on what they're. But then a dollar for a burger? It's the burger somewhere. Yeah. Would you ever get really good fries like that in a dollar burger somewhere? Does they sell them together? If you're getting burgers for a dollar, your fries aren't going to be five dollars. You know, if you get fries that are five dollars, burgers might be like fifteen dollars. That might be a really expensive place. Not so what's that? Will all three equations be the same? It will look the same. Can you give me the second one? You guys listen. Second equation, Ebony. Okay. She's looking at the green underline now, guys. The green. And 5y. Okay. Good job. OK. 
Okay, so again, take a look, guys. Four burgers, five fries, four shakes for $39. Okay, and finally, Jose, last one they had before us? Six eggs. Because the six burgers, good? Four fries, good? Three shakes, how much does it cost? 42. Okay? So take a look now. I've got all my equations. They're all listed in front of me. Now, if we had more time this year, okay, I would show you how to solve this all by hand. Remember how we solve with two variables and two equations using elimination or substitution? You can solve this with elimination. It's not very difficult, actually. You didn't say go by hand? No, no, no. It, it would take maybe like 10 minutes to go through this problem solving by hand. Because of the sake of time, and I want to spend more time reviewing the midterm with you guys, I'm going to show you how to do this. This topic right here, setting up the equation and going through it, yes, it will. What about solving it? Solving it, I might not ask you on the midterm to do it, but I'm going to have you do it on the test. And you solve it with a matrix, and I'll show you how to do that. Okay? So, if you've never heard of a matrix before, I'm going to go into detail a lot of it right now. So here's what I want you to do. Take out your calculators, please. Turn them on. If you don't have one still, make sure you look on. Do not sit there by yourself. I don't want to see anyone sitting there wastefully not doing anything. <laughs> All right, guys, let's go. It's a little faster than you Good night there. All right, you got one? Penny, you got your own? Yes. All right, Jordan, good. Sharon there, good. This is a triple share. We'll get a double. You got one too? Good. All right. Now, here's what I want you guys to do. You need to follow me in this order. Ole, relax. Now, we are using something called a matrix, and a matrix is extremely important. It solves these equations within like a millisecond for you. All you got to do is input some values. It's a simple way to do it. Okay? So here's how we do it. I'm going to go through the process, and then I'll discuss a little bit more. Press second, and then the matrix button, which is x to the negative 1. It's right here. I'm pointing to it, right below math. You see the word matrix. So press second, and then press this button right here to bring up a matrix list. So this is what you should have in front of you. You might not have anything here right now. That's fine. Because you have never input a matrix. Again, press second, and then the, but be the button below that. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, button. the button. The button below that. <laughs> okay? So again, second, and then the button below that. <laughs> Got it yet? Okay. Now, what we want to do... What we want to do is we want to input a matrix. Input. There's no word input here, but the word edit is along the top. So we're editing a matrix. So go over until you get to edit, and then please hit enter. Yours might say one by one or zero by zero or whatever. On the top, it's going to be flashing here. We want to look at our problem. Go back to your problem now. How many rows do I have? Three. How many columns do I actually have? Four. four. That's where three by four comes from in mind. Again, we have three rows. And we have four columns. So our matrix is a three by four matrix. That's what we're looking at. So we go back. We look into our calculator. And we type in a three here. Hit three. Hit enter. It'll flash on the next one. Hit four. Then hit enter. And it'll then be in the matrix. OK? Three, enter, four, enter. You're in the matrix now. At this point in time, has anyone, has anyone ever seen this before, before I keep going? No. Nope. Okay. All you need to do is this. If your equations are in order, please focus, look up here. Are you at the point yet? Are you in control of that? Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, not yet. I got three by four, then only three by Okay, so that's fine. You should have zeros. What you need to do is the following. Look at all these spots. See how these are all positions? Yeah. Input the positions in the right spots. So your first row, five, enter. Three, enter. Three, enter. Thirty-five, enter. No variables. No variables, just numbers. If you have a negative number anywhere, which we don't here, you need to make sure you use the negative sign and not the minus sign. 
if you ever have a negative number. So again, you are inputting all those numbers into your matrix. Hit enter every time and it'll go to the next spot. Guys, it's going to go over. You're going to have to like scroll over. You'll see. You can scroll over to the right to get the last row. Or last column. Sorry, last column. So, 5, 3, 3, 35. So, watch what I do. I memorize it. I don't even have to look. 5, 3, 335. Enter. And that puts all you see is 533. Three. Where's the 35? It's off the board over here. Okay? And it's this they do this because what if you have a matrix that's like 20 by 30? Well, it can't be 20 by 30. 20 by 21. Okay, then you'd have 21 entries this way, by 21 this by 20 this way. There would be a lot of inputs. Okay, so go to the next line. The next line, quickly. 45439. I go back. But four, enter. Five, enter. Four, enter. Thirty-nine, enter. Now I'm on the third row. On the third row, I go back. I look. Six, four, three, forty-two. Six, four, three, forty-two. Now I'm done in putting my matrix. Okay. Is everybody at this point in time? Is everybody at the same point with me right now? Yes. Okay. Press together. You have to do this. You have to quit out of the matrix. If you do the next command without quitting, it will not work. You press second and then quit. It's the mode button. It always brings you back to the home screen. Remember, second and then mode, which is quit, brings you back to the home screen. Now, at this point in time, what you need to do is do what's called a row, and I'll explain this, but row reduced echelon form. Just remember, R-R-E-F. Row reduced, R-R. Echelon is E, form is F. R R E F. That's what I want you to write down. R R E F. Here's how you get to it. You go. You go back into the matrix. Second matrix. So go back into the matrix. Now, we are no longer editing. We've edited the matrix already. Go over to math, please. And go down until you get to R R E F. It looks like it's letter B on mine. You all in the same spot, letter B? Yes. Not ref, but R-R-E-F. They are different. Okay, we are doing rural. So, please, hit enter there. Now, what we're doing is the following. We're trying to reduce this matrix to get an answer. What matrix did we just input? A, B, C, D, which one did we put it into? A. We put it into A, didn't we? Yeah. You go back. So go back to your matrix now. And now, instead of editing A, just press enter on matrix A. Just press enter on it, and it'll call matrix A out. So this is telling the calculator, reduce matrix A so I can get an answer. Now watch what happens when you press enter. Look how pretty that looks. <laughs> ones and zeros everywhere. Isn't that a good thing usually when you think of ones and zeros? Here's what this means. I'll explain to you. It's very simple. What did the x variable represent, guys? What did the x variable represent? Cost of what? What is it? Burger. Burger. So this tells me this is really x, this is y, this is z, and that equals x, x, y, y, z, z, equals, equals. So look at the first equation, everybody. Look at the first uh, uh, row. 1x plus no y's plus no z's is 4. What did x represent again? So this tells me one burger, but no fries and no shakes is $4. Or simply one burger is $4. So it's telling you how much editing costs, basically. Yes. So what does three represent, guys? Fries. Fries. Because no, no, fries. Take a look here. This is y now. We have zero x plus y. One y. Y is fries. Plus no shakes is three. So that means that fries are costing three dollars now. And finally. In the last line here, we've got no no burgers, no fries, one shake is two dollars. So Z is the cost of a shake, which equals two dollars. There's my answer, all my variables. So what does this do? This avoids using elimination and substitution method. 
It is useful when you have big equations like this, or systems of equations that are three variable, three equations. Is this clear? Yes. We'll do more examples, but I want to make sure the process was, was clear. It helps the practice. Again, like all things, helps the practice. Where did this come from? Okay. To pull up, uh, fine. To pull up the A, you got the RF ready? Press second, then hit matrix, and then just press enter. Did you figure out how to pull up the A here? We pulled it up, the A? You got all this, right? Meaning you got the whole? Okay, so make sure you write down what we have written next, okay? Again, remember, if you have one X, that means you have one burger. In that whole first column, or first row, sorry, you only have one X here. You have no Y's and you have no Z's. You have no X, but you have a Y, and you have no Z's. So this means you have one shape, one uh, fry. And this means you have one shape. So you got burger, fry, and shape. Now, this means that one burger costs $4. One fry costs $3. One shape costs $2. So those are my answers. Four, three, and two. It spits out the answers in order. Okay? It just gives you the answers in the order you put in the matrix. Now, it is important that if you look back here, look at all my variables. Aren't they all in order? X's are here. There's my X's. There's my Y's. There's my Z's. These are, what do we call these? Anybody remember the word for that? What do we call these? Your they are the cost, sure, but mathematically, when a number is by itself, what's the term for it? What do we call it? Uh, constant. Very good. Constant. Constant. I'm going to remind you guys when we review for midterm, but things like vocab and just knowing words will be used on the test, not as crazily, but I might give you like some matching where you match from definitions of words. So like coefficient. What's coefficient, guys, again? The number with the variable. The number in front of the variable. So like 3z here. 3 is the coefficient, whereas 35 is the constant, okay? So if they're not in order, this doesn't work. Again, only, you need to write this down, guys, this is the note. Only works if it's in order. It does not work if it's not in order. So this problem, if it wasn't in order, we could not do it. We could not do it. Only. Would the way Jose said it made it out of order? No. Jose was fine. But the only thing is we would have had to like switch all of them around every time. All three of them would have had Z's and X, the Z's and the Y's would have been switched in location. That's all. So you're talking it would have about, still worked. You, you're talking about logically, like literally, if like if I if I literally X's are here, Y's are here, Z's are here. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So that's like a little mistake. It could be all Y's here, all X's here, all Z's here. That's fine. Yeah, that's. But as I'm long saying. as you are consistent in your column. So, so what you were saying, it only works if you don't make like the little mistakes. Like if I accidentally switch the three and the four. Correct. The four. Correct. If you if you switch these two, or if you switched which three and the four, these two right here, maybe, yeah, it wouldn't work. As long as your Y's are lined up, your X's and your Z's, or your A's, B's, C's, whatever your coefficients are. Okay. Let's go on to a second one now. Again, this method can be solved by hand. I'm showing you guys a way to do a calculator. It's a little bit easier. But you have to use your calculator to do it. Now, let's go through this problem. Together, we have three people. John, Bobby, and Kristen. They have 70 bucks. This was an SAT problem, just so you guys know. Together, John and Bobby have 39, while Kristen has four more than Bobby. How much does each of them have? We don't want to sit here and try numbers. And I know logic works sometimes, but it's going to take you forever. So write your equation. Let's use First, how much money does each of them have? That tells me my let statements. My let statements, Jordan, tell me how many let statements here. If I'm wondering how much each person has, what will I let X, Y, and Z be equal to? And it doesn't matter. You can use J, K, B, or variables, doesn't make a difference. What would X be? The amount that who has? So the amount of money, okay, so amount, and again, don't write it three times, of money for John. Okay? Now, I want amount of money for all the rest, don't I? Please don't write it three times, okay? Bobby and then Kristen. Okay? So the amount of money for John, the amount of money for Bobby, the amount of money for Kristen. Okay, now, 
Enrique, can you dissect the first question or the first statement and give me an equation based on that? Look at the problem and replace the names and stop with variables where you can. Okay? That's it. Again, guys, take a look. Enrique just broke it down for us. X is the amount of money John has. Y is the amount of money Bobby has. Z is the amount of money Kristen has. Now, together they have 70. What does together mean? It means sum. The sum of. Add them up. Add them up. All together they have 70. Now, how many more equations do I need still? Good. I need two more. Because I have one and I still need two more to have three together. Can somebody give me the second equation? Marcus, I saw your hand shoot up. Second equation. All right. <coughs> John is which variable? John is x. Good. Bobby is? Plus y. And together they have how much? 39. Now, is Kristen included here, people? Yes. Yes. In no, this equation, is Kristen included? No. Look at what's boxed in in red. Do you see Kristen's name anywhere? No. No. So Kristen does not come into play here. So there's no z value this time. But so when you put it into the matrix, what should you put here, really? Four. A zero. A zero. There's no z's here. Take a look, everybody. Where I'm pointing right now. There are no z's here. So when you put this in the matrix later, make sure you have a zero there. Now, the last part, which is probably the trickiest. Kristen has four dollars more than Bobby. Right here. You got this one? Yeah. All right. So. Kristen is what variable? It is z. Okay, so Kristen. Z plus four. Okay. Uh, plus. Y equals. Here's the problem. No, I messed up. Oh, no, wait. Yeah. She has more than Bobby. Okay, so Z plus four. Z plus four equals Y. Some equal Y for it. That's where the trick comes in. Most people make a mistake. Let me go over this. A lot of people see Kristen has four dollars more than Bobby. So <coughs> Kristen is Z. But that there, has means equals, four more than means four plus, and Bobby is y. Did you put it up? Okay, yes. And so I can put it as y plus four and four plus y. It does not matter. Now, many of you got that. That's good. But you know what? The last line is not in the right order. Because take a look. Isn't the y on this side of the equation? Yeah. Where should the y be? On the other side. So when I rewrite this, I, I, these are fine. These are all correct. <coughs> but what I want to do now on the side, I'm going to write a little note to myself. I'm going to take this. I'm going to take this thing that I wrote here a minute ago, move it to the side, move it to the side with my z. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the y over. I'm going to move the y over. Where'd you please pick your head up? So subtract the y from both sides. Subtract this y. Subtract this y. This becomes just z minus y. You can't add or subtract z and y. So this becomes z minus y. And what am I left with when I get rid of the y? What am I left with? Just 4. So if I write this one here, I've got z, I've got a 4, and I've got a minus y. This is where it's going to get confusing. So again, my statement said that Kristen was 4 years older than Bobby. Bobby. Yes. Bobby. Okay, Kristen Bobby. was four years older than Bobby. Now, this does not work unless you put it in the correct form. So you need to get all of your variables on the left side, get all of your constants on the right side. Look at the left side now. What is the sign that Z carries in front of it here? Plus. There's a plus sign here, really. And there's a minus sign in front of the Y. So, that's so when you put this in the correct order, the minus sign has to carry with the Y right here. That comes from here. The positive sign from the z comes from right here. And then the positive 4 comes in right here. So when you input your matrix, imagine you forgot your calculator. And you wanted to show me that you know what to do. And I say, OK, at least write the matrix. Here's how you write the matrix out. Just imagine that you're actually writing out all the numbers. So can somebody tell me what all my numbers <coughs> look like from this matrix alone? Somebody besides Marcus, sorry. 
Come on, other people. We all need to volunteer. It can't just be the Marcus Evan the Olin show. There are a bunch of numbers here. We want to write a matrix like we did in the calculator. What would it look like? We just did it a minute ago. We just did it a minute ago. Okay, so can you set me through the process? All the numbers, numbers. What's in front of X? Guys, you need to stop talking to focus because Jose is the only one that answered this. I know a few of you know it, but please stop talking. What is it? Next? No, why? And then finally? Okay. Again, guys, again, you have a matrix with three rows and four columns. Input a three by four, do R, R, E, F. Remember, negative one, you need to use the negative key. It's at the bottom. So when I input this in here, use this negative key down here. Again, this is the negative you want to be using. Not that many of them. Now, let me show you a little trick. Okay, here's a little trick for you. Go back into your matrix. Go over to edit. Edit matrix A again. Hit enter, enter, because the size is good already. Input your matrix. Now, once you input your matrix, quit and wait for me for a second. I'll show you a little trick. <laughs> so inputting the matrix, we got 1, 1, 1, 70. 1, enter, 1, enter, 1, enter, 7, 0, enter. Next. I've got 11039. One, enter, one, enter, zero, enter, 39, enter. It happens to be there, right? Let me be honest. Next, I've got zero, negative one, one, four. Zero, negative, down here again, one, one, and then four. If you use a minus sign, it will not work. I'm telling you now. You need a negative. Now, quit out of here, please. So you're back at the home screen. Don't type anything in. Whatever you do, don't type anything in. Remember the last command we brought up was REF of matrix A and it did all that work? I don't want to do all that work again. So watch this. Press second and then press enter. And it brings up the last command that you input. This was what we input last time. So again, all I pressed was second and then I pressed enter. Because I haven't used my calculator since. So this is the last command I used. Now hit enter. And you get your numbers. And remember, people, remember, take a look. Here. Okay, that's what we got going on here. Those are what the variables look like. So really, I've got 1x equals 12, 1y equals 27, and 1z equals 31. Well, what was x, y, and z? What was x in the beginning? Oh, that's it. What was x? What was it? John. Okay. So John is 12. Okay, John is 12. Who is the next person, Bobby? Who is Y, Bobby? So Bobby is 27. And then finally, Kristen is? How old is Kristen? How old? Is this asking how old they are or how much money they have? How much money does my, I'm sorry guys. Sorry, I thought it was age, I thought that's what this problem is. 31. So Bob, John has $12, Bobby has $27, and Kristen has $31. Again, your answers are right off here. Just read them right off. Now, here's a suggestion for you guys. Remember concept 27 that we did last week? We looked at elimination method with two equations, two variables. Yeah. You can use the same thing with a matrix just to check your answer. Even if you do it by hand, you can still check your answer. So what are you doing there? Oh, Mr. Brown, those are your answers. I was just wondering why the ones are nice. I just put the ones there for the heck of it, you know. But I mean, if you divide by one, you still get 12, right? I'm just showing you where it comes from. All right. Now, before we start the last problem, I want to get to this one. I want to give you a handout before we start that. So let's take a look at something. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
You can start reading this, but I want to go over it and explain exactly where you can see systems of equations. All right, so this was, it's a real story, guys. What's a cowboy? So, say again? What's a cowboy? Cowboy? Cowboy. Cowboy? I don't even know where you're looking. Give me right. a second. It's a name. It's oh, that's just random names. Oh. So, um, What's good? Yeah, I was about to say, this does look like Two years ago, you guys played laser tag before? Yeah. 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 Right you never played laser tag? Oh. I have. It's the funnest thing. It's so funnest much fun. Thing. Laser tag is not fun. Two years ago I went, when I was, it was my first year teaching here, and I went with like a few friends. I ended up going with, there was like, there were a few other teachers that were there too, like Mr. Amin and Ms. Kane came along, I think, and somebody else. But we went with a few other people. Now, when we went, here's what happened. We were playing, and every time we played, we got a scorecard. And this is a sample of one of our scorecards, okay? Every time we played, we got a scorecard. And each time we played, there were important things on the scorecard. I know you can't see it that well, but look up here. On the scorecard, it told you how many shots you fired, your accuracy, all that kind of stuff. Then it told you how many times you shot people in certain locations. Now, in laser tag, you have four places you can get shot. You can get shot in the chest, in the back, the shoulders, or the gun. There's no face shot. No, you don't wear a helmet or anything, so no face shot. Shot in the gun. In the chest, in the shoulders, or in the back. So, okay? With a little laser tag, you know? Now, you could also shoot the base on the other side. If you shoot the base, it weakens the base until you destroy the base. So, you could shoot the base, you could shoot the shoulders, shoot the chest, shoot the back, shoot the gun, and you could also destroy the base. It was a different kind of shot. So, on the scorecard, take a look. It tells you on the front, you shot 19 people. You shot 33 people on the shoulder. You shot 17 in the back and shot 38 in the gun. That's a phaser. And then down here, it tells you that you shot the base, I think it's twice, is that what? And then I killed the base once. Okay? Now, here's the question though. Every round you got a score. So my score is somewhere on here, at the very top, 11,050. But I have no idea what each shot was worth. Like, I have no idea if it was worth better to shoot somebody in the chest or in the shoulder. This is my card, yeah. This is one of our games. Now, here's the thing. If you notice, guys, you have a certain amount of points and you have six possible shots you can take. You can shoot six different ways. So after the game, somebody, I forget, it was probably Mr. Amin that I asked, said something to the extent of, like, where is it worth shooting? Which, which shot? Should we shoot the chest, the gun, the back? You know what I mean? What's worth it more? So they don't tell you. So we asked the guy at the place, like, we're like, what is each thing worth? He goes, I don't know, you know. I'm like, all right, let me figure it out. We can solve the math. So <laughs> what we said was this. We have six things you want to figure out. Math. Shot in the front, in the shoulder, in the back, in the gun. Shoot the base or destroy the base. Six different shots. So I will need six different variables. And I'm going to have six equations. This only tells me one equation worth. This gives me all the coefficients for my equation and the total amount of points like we did. But I need six different scenarios. So what I did was this. We defined X, Y, W, Z, A, and B as shooting in the front, shoulders, back, the gun, shooting the base, and then destroying the base. Tagging means shooting. So if you shoot the base for a while, it weakens it, but then when you destroy it, it, like, it goes off. You know, you get all the points for it. So these are the six ways to shoot. Now, before we get to the answer, I know the answer is there. Logically, it's very easy to shoot somebody in the gun because a lot of people end up sniping and they poke their gun over the edge, but they don't poke their body over the top. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. They lean over the edge and they shoot down on people. Did you so only the gun is, is only, uh, the only thing visible. So technically, it's probably pretty easy to shoot somebody in the gun. To shoot somebody in the front is probably pretty hard because you have to be looking right at them, you know? And then it's a standoff. Hello, to shoot somebody in the back as they're walking away, it's not hard. So you probably <laughs> wouldn't get any points in the back. And then shoulders, there were four targets, two here and two here. So that was like an in-between also. Then destroying the base took a lot of shots, the very final shot. And then tagging the base was like you shoot it 20 times, then it destroyed it. So looking at my card, I shot 19 people in the front. 
If you look at the look at the actual card in the front, 19x, 19 in the front. Then I shot 33 people on the shoulders. I shot 17 people on the back. I shot 38 people on the gun. I shot the base twice, and then my third shot, or the third time I actually hit the base, he destroyed. So I was the person that actually killed the base at the end. That's my and then my total score is 11050. But again, how many equations do I need? I need six because I have six variables. So I took six other scorecards throughout the day, maybe not the same. <coughs> but six other random scorecards, and I made six other equations. So here was my first scenario up top. See that? That was the one we started with. And here are the other five different scenarios, giving me a total of six scenarios. So first scenario was my scorecard in that one year, and then it was just random scorecards from other people at certain points. Okay? So that was the total. Now, to solve this, all I did was exactly what we just said. I wrote a matrix. I literally just set up a matrix exactly how we just saw it, and I used the command R R E F. Literally, I did exactly what we were talking about. I have an app on my phone, so I was able to just put it in here on my phone. Same thing as a calculator. So by solving this, take a look at my answers now. This represents X, this was Y, this was W, Z, A, B. So it turns out to shoot in the front was 200. Like we said, it's the hardest to shoot somebody in the front, it's worth the most points. So but shooting someone in the gun in the shoulders is pretty easy. Those were only worth 50 points. Shooting in the back was worth 100. Shooting in the back was worth 100. Shooting the base turned out didn't get you any points at all. So you could sit there all day and shoot the base and it weakens it, which is good for your team, right? But you don't get any points. But if you destroy the base, you get 2,000 points. So what we figured out was this. Based on the amount of shots you can get, it's not worth even shooting the base at all. The base is worth 2,000 points. That's nothing. I could shoot somebody 10 times in the front before I get to kill the base problem. You know what I mean? A lot of people would go into the base, try and kill your base. Meanwhile, you would be sitting there just, you know, lighting them up at, their, at your own base. If you defend your own base, you can sit there and get a ton of different shots at your own base. When they're trying to get 2,000 points, which is a lot, but in the, while they're getting 2,000 points, I could probably shoot them 10 times easily and get the points all back. You follow what I'm saying? So in this kind of a game, it turns out it's better to play defense than offense. Because on defense, you sit there and get different shots. Whereas on offense, all you can do is shoot the base, which is not worth a lot in the end. And once you destroy the base once, it's done for the rest of the round. You can't kill the base again. So this is really not worth it, it turned out to be. Okay? Now, there's another paragraph I put down, but this is a topic. It's in linear algebra. This is actually like your third level of calculus. You would study this kind of stuff. And you guys a little preview. But again, the matrix looks complex, but it's the same thing we just did, but we had more equations. Now, what I want to do to end today, I want to take a look at how you would set this one up. Okay? Say again? That's my... No. Oh, no, 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 no. It's, uh, it's always like birthday parties at these places. We just went there for lunch. It's a birthday. Um, what do we go for a birthday? So you got three points here. Okay? We got three points, and we've got a parabola. And a parabola is our standard form right here. And we want to know what is A, what is B, and what is C. Again, Bridget, come here, up here, please, focus. A, B, and C are the things that describe the parabola. They tell us about the parabola. I want to know what A, B, and C is. I have three points here. Now, based on those three points that I'm given, if I plug them in, I will get a matrix. So let me go ahead and do that. So if you plug in the 2, 2 here, this point right here, plug it into this equation. This 2 goes in for Y. This 2 goes in for all the x's. Over here, this 14. The 14 goes in for y. The 4 goes in for the x's. The negative 10 goes in for y. The negative 4 goes in for the x's. So I'm going to do this three times real quick. So again, if I do this, plug in the 2 for y and the 2 for the x's. Plug in the 14 for y and the 4 for the x's. Pull in focus, please. Plug in the negative 10 for the y and the negative 4 for the x's. And take a look. Doesn't it look quite familiar to what we've been doing the whole time? Yeah. So we have three variables, a, b, and c. I need to simplify, though, and it's backwards. So I can move all those numbers over here. It doesn't make a difference. Again. With what I have given here, I'm going to simplify. This 2 squared becomes what? 4. 4 squared becomes? 8. 16. Thank you. Negative 4 squared becomes? 
still 16. Remember, negative squared is a positive. So instead of putting the squares, put in the actual numbers now. So rewrite it. 2, 14, negative 10. And rewrite all three of these lines here. But put in the numbers. So here I got 4a, 16a, 16a. Down here I got 2b, 4b, negative 4b. And I've got c, c, and c. Again, take a look, please. Make sure you understand what's going on here. I am just simplifying the numbers. So 4 squared is 16, that becomes this. Negative 4 squared is 16, that comes here. Now, when you input into the matrix, you have to put these constants on the right side. Remember that. Okay? So when you put your final matrix in for this, your final matrix will look like, again, I'm putting these numbers here, these three, all the way over here in this column. Two. 14, negative 10. And then list all of your others. I want to give you some practice to work on tonight. Remember, guys, tomorrow we'll review. Thursday will be the short test on 26, 27, 28. Okay, I'm going to give you some practice stuff to work on tonight. Tomorrow, you also have your 27 with the 7 10 round. Here's what I want you to do. Ignore the direction. Do everything with a matrix. Everything with a matrix, please. If you don't have a calculator, I will put up a matrix thing online tonight under news. There will be a link to a matrix calculator you can use if you don't have your own. Again, do all the problems, solve them all with the matrix, not by hand. It says in the directions, do some by hand, some with the matrix. Do them all with the matrix, please. There's three of them, one for each of you guys, okay? Huh? Awesome. Again, solve with a matrix, please. 